I passed these law wrongs, in a village of Malay-speaking people and in a place reserved for settlers of this ethnic group. These settlers nonetheless came from a variety of ethnic groups that constitute the Malays. There were Javanese, Bugis, Boi and Orboyanese, Majis, hybrid Chinese, Arabs, Indian Muslims, and a Sikh young woman Zayda whose parents were from the land of the Bengalis who later married one of my mother's cousin, Ali. There were Malays from different states that moved into this Kampong Melayu, from Perak, Nejuri Sembilan, Milika, Salanga, and even as far as Kelantan and Kedah. But it was called a Malay Kampong with only Malays allowed to be given land to live in. I arrived at the place where a crowd was waiting. I love stopping by and watching what is happening whenever people congregate, whether it is in my village or in the petrol diesel stinky river rotten egg smelling town of Johor Bahru about three miles from home. There would always be people selling something, ointments, batik cloths, t-shirts from neighboring Singapore city, or even aphrodisiacs prepared traditionally and packaged as the best sexual magical mystical pill that could help one not only sustain happiness in marriage but marry two, three, and up to four wives. Power pills ten times better than Viagra, I would imagine. My favorite stopover would always be at the Indian man in Doti, smoking a Sayuti or cheap looking cigarillos from India, with a parrot that tells people's future by picking up cards that would tell you when you will die. That's my favorite place in front of a Chinese Sinses store where I would squat for an hour sometimes watching the parrot become Nostradamus, before heading home with a plastic bag of friend bananas. 30 pieces of pisang goreng a pop costing me a Malaysian dollar, those plantains looking crispy crunchy banana fritters my mother loves. So, I stopped by the house on Lorong Aman, Peace Avenue. Something was happening. It looked like it was a Malay martial arts demonstration. Men in black traditional Malay hero outfit, with red headscarf with the Arabic words written from right to left that looked like it reads Lay Allah Allah Muhammad Rasul Allah there is no God but God and Muhammad is the messenger of God written on it. In white over red, purity over blood. Yes, words that I have seen on the flag of Dish, ISIS, or the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria, that globalizing terrorizing military entity and an informal creation of the American Empire. There were a group of around 30 or so people, all men and some boys gathering and I pushed myself into the group to get a closer look. I was small enough to bonsai myself into the crowd of adults and to have the closest view of what I thought intriguing. It was standing room only. I was there in full clear view of what was happening. I could hear some screams and religious chants. I saw a man in black on the ground with his eyes closed, kneeling. He had a red head covering on. Another man, with heavy moustache and a similar head covering as well was standing behind him. He was holding a parang, the traditional machete used to cut bamboos. It looked sharp. Very sharp. Shining sharp. It looked almost like a mini sword used by those Shaolin warriors I saw on those Bruce Lee movies and especially in the Boxer Rebellion. Look at this thick plank of wood his voice thundered to the crowd. Look closely. The man on the ground was quiet. The man with the long machete held the block of wood with his right hand and threw it up in the air. As it reached almost in front of his face, with one strike of the machete, he broke the thick wood into two. It fell on the ground with a plonk and a clank and a plop. Very sharp this thing is, you. His voice thundered. He looked at the crowd, now gasping. Had his moustache been trimmed sharply thin, he would have looked like Salvador Dali holding a little chicken. His dark curly hair, had it been longer and more stylish would make him look like the great Mexican-American guitarist Divo Dip Carlos Santana famed for his song Black Magic Woman. I could not believe my eyes. I was silent, like others. What's next, I wondered. I looked at the other man kneeling. I heard the man chanting some Arabic words I could not understand, as if praying for his life. Very sharp, this parang is. Is it not? The crowd murmured something, in agreement of what was said. 
there were still the broken pieces of wood on the ground. The man with the machete took the pieces and laid them side by side. Suddenly, there was a loud arc of a sound followed by what sounded like Allah, the god of the Muslims. I heard and I could see the man jumped up in the air wielding the machete and struck the two pieces of wood, breaking them in four now. Everybody gasped. Very sharp, right? His voice again. At that moment I was wondering what the man kneeling on the ground a few meters in front of us was doing. He was still chanting some religious verses. I could feel my mouth wide open. What is going to happen next? Are those blocks of wood going to be cut into pieces again? What does that have to do with the man kneeling? Decades after that those images of ISIS and beheadings were all over the internet. Here I was wondering. Are you ready to witness a miracle? He asked. There was so much authority in his thundering voice. Are you ready to see how the power of Alatala works? Dot the power of the Malay warrior spirit? He roared. The crowd was getting excited and a few voices shouted back yes. Allahu Akbar I heard that too. I could smell sweat coming from the people around me. I could smell armpits above me. I could smell Indonesian clove cigarette, that signature aromatic smell of village folks. I could smell magic and mysticism. I could also smell the foul smell of people's breath, of breathing as if each breath is a mantra of living and last breath of life. The smell of nagging and solidifying phlegm brewed for ages in the chest. The smell from the whiff of the dirty river of the city, of the legendary Seget River. I think that was the smell. The smell of secrecy. Deep secrecy. Of anger and revenge. Of May 13, 1969.